Hi guys, welcome to another episode of our Duotone Foiling Tech Talks. I'm Klaas and I'm standing here with our foil designer Jerome Bonnieu. Today we want to talk about foil R&D. How do we work? And uh, I just want to quickly introduce the team that we're working with at Duotone Foiling. Um, next to Jerome and myself, we have a very important person behind the scenes, which is uh, Poldo. Poldo is doing all our simulations and layup calculations, so a very important element. Jerome will go into that. Um, we have our foil product manager, Alex. Um, we have the Spencers, uh, Finn and Jeffrey Spencer on Maui, um, testing in Maui waters, a lot of the high-end stuff and disciplines we are not so familiar with, like downwinding, for example, they're really good at. Mm -hmm. And obviously we make use of a lot of our team riders um, in the testing process, especially when it comes to durability. So we're talking a lot of different places. You live in Mauritius uh, in a different environment in a pretty clean, uh, I would say, swimming pool lagoon. Yeah. Um, I'm in Kiel with a medium saltwater content, Baltic Sea, North Sea mix, small waves, um, medium to stronger winds. We have uh, Craig Gertenbach, I forgot Craig, very important uh, person, um, also um, supervising uh, as well the, the foiling division and uh, being really active here in the Bavarian lakes and Lake Garda, so freshwater um, testing feedback, very important uh, element of, of our market, of course. Um, yeah, Maui, as I just said, and one very important element is our test lab. We have our own lab in the basement of this building uh, where we have tons of different machines and uh, we are testing flex, um, durability. Um, we put the, the foils through their, through their different forces and really analyze uh, what the layups are holding, what the, the designs are holding, how they flex. Um, so that's a, re a really big part of our R&D. Um, but talking R&D, the first thing, like how do you start when, uh, when we want to make a new foil? What's the process, Jerome? Yeah, so I mean, it all starts with kind of a, a design brief, right? We've got to define what we want to do. Who's, uh, what's the target market? Uh, which discipline is it going to be for? Uh, and that's where I'm going to sort of do my little research, uh, basically based on the writing that I do. I try to sort of touch at all the disciplines. Uh, so I'll have a good idea of what I think would be a good improvement on the, the range of wing that we want to do. Do a little bit of, of course, market research as well. See a little bit where the competitors are, what are the trends, things like that. And I will basically come up with a first design idea, first 3D sometimes, sometimes it's just 2D and sketch, and present it to, to the team, you know, yourself, um, uh, Craig, uh, the Spencers, and explain what are my thought processes and uh, why I picked that outline, why I picked a type of profile, um, run it through you guys, and you know, often, Hopefully Most we people. like what, what we see. Exactly. So what, what, what's happening next? <laughs> so next we're going to go, that's when we sit down, myself and Poldo, who is an a engineer, and he's going to do a lot of the calculations. So, you know, the lift, the drags, uh, roll, pitch. Um, uh, that's when we, we sit down and spend literally hours comparing different designs. Mm -hmm. So I'll send him three, four, five different designs. And uh, we'll talk about profiles, you know, uh, optimized profiles for sort of uh, beginners, uh, slow speed, medium speed, high speed, whatever it is we want to make, whatever the, the discipline so is. So whatever is in the design brief. Whatever is in the design brief, we're, gonna, we're able to simulate this on, on softwares, on computers. So we can basically look at graphs together. Uh, okay, what's the lift generated by this one? What happens if we only change the outline from this to there? What happens if we only change the profile? What happens if we change the, the twist in the wing? Literally, it's a lot of yeah, looking mm -hmm. at graphs. So basically, when you talk about these different parameters, this is obviously the outline, Yeah. Um, what you see. And there's uh, some parameter in the outline, which is the sweep. Yeah. Um, you, t you talk about sweep is basically if the wings are... Yeah, how much, how much it goes sort of backwards uh, as you go towards the tips. So okay. uh, you can have a wing pretty straight, you can have it sweeping forward, sweeping backwards at different rates. Yeah. Um, and that's gonna change uh, the values on these, on these famous graphs. <laughs> so then one of the very important parts, the profile, what do you see from the side basically if you chop the wing in half? Yeah, if you were to cut that wing and look from the side, that'll be the profile, correct? Then you're playing a lot and a lot of talk about the aspect ratio. 
Yep. So what's exactly the aspect ratio? So the aspect ratio is uh, basically the relationship between the span, distance from one wingtip to the other wingtip, and the surface area. So to get the value of the aspect ratio, you square the span and you divide it by the surface area. And uh, uh, a high aspect ratio is sort of like a 10, 10 aspect ratio. Okay. So the square of the, the span divided by the surface area. Um, for example, this wing is a 9.4, so considered sort of high aspect ratio. Medium would be 8 and low would be around 5 or 6. Nowadays. Nowadays. All these things change, of course, but uh, that's what we consider low, medium, high currently. Yeah. All right. And then you have curvature. So curvature is basically when you look at the wing from the front, uh, if it's like going down or yep. up or wherever, yep. or straight. Um, and you talked about twist just now. So what yep. do you do with a twist? Tip twist, so basically the ang angle of attack of your profile is gonna be slightly different between the center of the wing and the wing tip. Often we, we sort of twist the, the tip down uh, because we down don't... Down with the leading edge. Yeah, so the leading edge is further down on the trailing edge because we don't really want to uh, generate lift from the wingtips, uh, especially when we're going fast, so when the, the wing is kind of horizontal. We actually want to have something pretty neutral or even removing some lift from the center so that we can achieve these high speeds. Mm -hmm. And then when you're going s uh, slower and you actually uh, have a positive angle of, of, a, of attack on your whole system, then your tips come into play and suddenly they are, they are starting to help you and they are lifting. So depending on, again, what's the speed range, what's the discipline, we will have more or less um, twists. And again, it's something we can simulate. It's something we sometimes choose to uh, try when we do three, four different protos. We will keep like all the parameters the same and only play around with the twist, get on the water, see which one feels the best. Um, so. There's a lot of things we can change, and it's sort of like a never-ending process. But uh, I can tell you guys, yeah. it's a never-ending. Yeah. If we don't give you a deadline, you can discuss with Paul for we can, weeks. We can go on and, and on. And, but normally, yeah. you decide like a, like a certain medium size, and you do three, four different versions, right? Yeah. So what happens is, if we have a range where, for example, we know it's going to be between a thousand and two thousand square centimeter, let's say the free range, which is our beginner-oriented range. Um, we will first do like a 1500. We will go midway, optimize that one. So do all the prototyping on that one. And then once we've got a very good 1500, obviously we, we don't just scale it up and down to the smaller and the bigger one. We will still tweak it. Uh, often we will give the smaller size a little bit more camber, a little bit more lift because we're going down in surface area. And on the opposite end with the bigger sizes, we're gonna decamber the profiles a little bit, make them not so lifty. Yeah. But initially you start with one size. Initially we start with one, run all the testing, like change all the parameters on that one size until we're super happy with it. And then we kind of go to the other sizes. Okay, yeah. we tell you to push the button, then what happens? So we, we actually work directly with our factory that produces the, the wing in the end for production. Uh, they make all the prototypes. So right from the very first prototype, we have the layer that we, we're gonna have later on in the production. So there's no sort of uh, uh, surprises between the prototype and the production, which is quite so important. The layup is something that Polo then is working on, right? Yeah, so that's more uh, on uh, Polo's side. He's uh, obviously an engineer uh, specialized in, in composites and um, he will specify you know, what, what fibers we're putting where where does which uh, layup stop start, which direction we want to put it, uh, how heavy, how strong, what grade of carbon fiber we want to use, what foam we want to put inside, uh, what density. And it's obviously uh, related to the price point of the, of the, of the, the front wing, for example. Um, is it something that, uh, do we have uh, some weight limitations? Uh, does it have to be under a certain weight or not? I mean, all these parameters come into play. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. Yeah, that's basically science by itself, the layup, <laughs> layup yeah. sheets. Um, so then we basically wait four or five weeks, um, get the wings yeah. for testing. And normally what we do is we send them to all the different testing 
um, yeah, options we have. You get one in Mauritius, I get one north of Germany, Craig gets one for the lakes here, the Spencers get one on Maui. Yep. What do you think, why is it so important that they are tested in all these different places and by different people? Yeah, so it's super important to test it everywhere because the, the feedback you get is always slightly different between fresh water and salt water. Basically, the, the foil lifts differently and uh, has different drag values as well. So at the end of the day, we want to we wanna make something that works everywhere. So there's 100% some compromises happening right at the end. Let's say I will have a preferred setup for my body weight and the Mauritian swimming pool waters, which might be different to Craig here in, in, in fresh water. And it's important for us to go, okay, where can we meet in the middle? with something that I'm still happy with, that still works for me, but also works for Craig. And um, yeah, that's, that's why it's important to have that, that team with different sort of uh, water conditions and uh, different body weights, because at the end of the day, our different products- Different focus, different <coughs> disciplines. Different disciplines, because at the end of the day, this thing needs to work everywhere. Globally. You know? yeah, we yeah. can't say, oh, this only works on Maui. Yeah. Doesn't work. <laughs> So what then we have, that's probably also uh, worth a mention, we have normally then a test stack of different options of fuselages. Yeah. Total nightmare because testing foils, <laughs> screwing, unscrewing. If you want to change a fuselage, here, there's multiple screws to take out, put it back together. Yeah. For in my case, sometimes pretty cold. <laughs> yeah. So I can spend hours just screwing. Thanks for all these fuselage options. <laughs> but why do you think that's important? Yeah, I mean, it's important because we want to find the, the perfect setup. So we can mount the, the front wing, you know, closer or further away from the, from the mast. So we've got fuselages with longer, shorter necks here, longer, shorter back pieces. We've got shims that we can put at the front. We can play around with the angle of attack, front, rear. Um, and it's important to go through sort of all the combinations because um, sometimes, let's say, you did not expect that a certain wing would be working, let's say, at, I don't know, one degree angle of attack. You thought, ah, zero degree is gonna be the perfect one. That's what the simulation showed. And then in the end, when you test, you actually realize, oh, this one degree is actually better. So it's just something you have to go through and it, it takes some time, but uh, that's, uh, that's how it goes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can say it's a massive amount of work. Yeah. Um, but uh, also, I think it, you feel the differences quite drastically from year to year still. Foiling is still young. There's yeah. a lot of, lot of uh, R&D happening, and that's uh, really great to feel. Um, so, And then we decide, basically, we have four different versions, and that's our favorite. Then you go into the sizes, as you just mentioned, right? Yeah. Then we're going to tweak them to, to make the bigger and the smaller size. Of course, we're still on a test those other sizes, make sure we're happy with them. And then um, that's when sort of the team riders come into play, when it's time to really punish the, the wings. So the freestyle guys, the wave guys, uh, we're gonna put some, if it's beginner stuff, we're gonna put it in schools, have them sort of Abusing. abuse it in the schools. And yeah. um, this is a very <laughs> important parameter for us. We want our stuff to be bulletproof, you know, as much as possible. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's definitely one of the things that our foils are known for is you grab them on the beach and like everything is super solid. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, then we abuse them, <laughs> make sure nothing breaks. And if everything's holding up, then uh, it's ready for production basically. If the first shot of your proto if, was a good one. If everything went well. We, yeah. Like uh, I remember we did some rounds of multiple in yeah. one size yeah. after the other and then can yeah. take some time, but uh, definitely you, the simulation makes it quite, quite yeah. a lot quicker than going for trial and error. Sometimes, obviously, you, you don't go in the right direction right from the start. And uh, you also want to sort of try maybe some things that are a little bit more crazy, like some more crazy design ideas, because the sport is still new. I think it's important to sort of keep an open mind, not just look what everyone else is doing and copy them. Um, I think we've got some some of such products coming up, which we're going to talk about. Um, and uh, but yeah, in, in general, there's still a lot to discover and uh, yeah, yeah. a lot of things to play with. Yeah, I think what's also um, quite important to mention is that each of us um, has test partners. Yeah. So thanks to a big team and behind the scenes, um, we have I have my my buddies in in uh, northern Germany that I call for testing. So we do back to back with the same setup. 
all of us have the same GPS watch. So we discuss the timings. Obviously, yeah. you have the fastest swimming pool water. <laughs> <laughs> so you always beat us. Yeah. Um, but the spences go back to back, and that's super important to feel the fine differences because some of the differences are really small. If you change the angle by 0 0.3, and then you need to decide in different waters if that's the better option or not. It's like yeah. really a long process to run through a lot of different combinations. But yeah. ultimately, you feel the differences. So, All right. That's... Uh, Thanks for, for the insights of R&D. Um, I hope you guys like that content. Give us a like, give us a subscribe. There's quite a bit more coming of these uh, foil tech episodes. Every single um, foil in the range we talk about. So stay tuned for more.